Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com. We're answering your questions live at the Heart Valve Summit. I am thrilled to be here with Dr. Steve Bowling from Michigan Medicine. He's a cardiac surgeon. Steve, thanks for being with me. Adam, thanks for having me. And as you know, Steve, we're answering these great questions that came in from our community. This one comes in from Joaquim. He writes, publications have revealed that 50 to 80% of sternal infections are discovered after discharge, and that cardiac patients have the highest re-emission rates. Since the sternal, sternal wires are the only force holding the sternum together after surgery, why is it that external chest supports are not a standard, adjunctive, and precautionary procedure after surgery? Joaquin, that is a really interesting question. First of all, the infection rate from a sternal incision is actually pretty low. It's less than 1%, and in many units it's far less than that these days. With sternal wires, your sternum should be stable. So if you have sternal instability, something has gone wrong. Those sternal wires are actually stronger than your bone and should hold the bone together. It's just like a broken bone. Yes, we do put a cast on your arm when you break it. The difference is you're not breathing with your arm. Remember, Joaquin, you have to move your entire chest cavity in and out to breathe, so I don't want to clamp that chest cavity down. One, you can't breathe, and two, your pneumonia rates will go higher. Remember, I want you out of bed and walking, walking, walking immediately after surgery. Your sternal wires really should make that incision stable, and if they're not, the patient needs to say something and the physicians need to do something. Steve, a quick follow-up. A lot of patients have been asking about this. The sternum, through a traditional open heart sternotomy. How long does it take after those wires have been put around the sternum, after they've been slammed together, to heal? So that's an interesting question. The healing of a bone occurs in two ways. The bone cells come in, called blasts, and they just dump a whole bunch of calcium in there. If you've ever seen a broken arm, Four weeks later, it's completely as strong it'll be and it has a huge amount of calcium in there. And you think, oh my gosh, where'd that all come from? And then it takes about eight weeks when a different type of cells, the osteoclasts, come in and they're the artists. They sort of trim away the bone and then 10 to 12 weeks later, it looks perfectly normal. Wow. So the strength is probably all there at four weeks, but there's still some tailoring so the patient may feel something out there, but really at four weeks, it's pretty much as strong as it's ever gonna be. And in fact, patients ask me, oh, at four weeks, can I get into a car accident? And we say, no, we recommend against car accidents anyways. <laughs> well, as always, Steve, thanks for your help here at the Heart Valve Summit. You're, I know you're one of the directors here, and thanks for taking care of so many patients in our community that have come to you and your team. You've just done an incredible job, and we're, it's an honor to be here with you.